Good morning. On behalf of Emmanuel Congregational United Church of Christ, I welcome you today. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are always welcome here, regardless of gender, age, orientation, socioeconomic status, disability, race, or ethnicity, or whatever barriers you think there are that keep you from a full relationship with God, they do not exist here, and you are welcome. I want to thank Jim Phillips and Kathleen Baker for helping with the live music on Sundays. It wouldn't be the same without them. I appreciate their gifts so much. Today is Pentecost Sunday. It is a day that we celebrate here at Emmanuel. The gift of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church is an important day. So, you see, we do have a few red balloons, but usually this sanctuary would be filled with red balloons. Didn't make much sense because none of you would be here to enjoy that. So instead, we have uh, put some balloons out front attached to the rail on the street side. And if you are listening to the message, if you're going by, feel free to stop and just take a balloon. Take it home and let it remind you throughout today that our God gives good gifts. And the gift of the Holy Spirit is the best. So let us celebrate that gift and the gift of the church being birthed. We are still continuing on with prayer breakfast every week, every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. You can connect with us through Zoom. If you're watching on YouTube, you have seen that Zoom link and various announcements. And please just join us Thursday nights and Thursday morning. We're having a virtual coffee hour. Same link. Just join us and catch up with one another. That's at 10 o'clock on Thursday mornings and 6.30 Thursday evening. We are going to begin a new book study in a couple of weeks, but we want to give people enough time to order their books. The book we are going to be reading and discussing together is called The Grave Robber, and it's by Mark Batterson. It's a great book. It will lift your spirits and boost your faith a great deal. We read one by him a few years ago called The Circle Maker, and that did the same thing. And I promise you'll enjoy this one just as much. I would invite you at this time to just pause, quiet your hearts, and think about the gift of the Holy Spirit as Jim plays some centering music. I'm also going to put up some photos of the balloons that are outside. God bless. Today's Gathering Words is a video. It's been recorded because I wanted the effect of different languages and different voices. So I thank Evelyn and Torben, Nikhil, and Annabelle for helping me with this project. 
Sing to our God a new song. Let every generation sing praise to our God. Lass die Generationen unserem Gott Lob singen. Cantaré a mi Dios una nueva canción, todas las generaciones. Let our voices give praise beyond words and ages and cultures. May our words and deeds blend in harmony, giving voice to the Spirit who moves among us. Mögen unsere Worte und Taten einstimmen in Harmonie und dem Geist eine Stimme geben, der unter uns wirkt. Que nuestras palabras y acciones sean en harmonía, dándole voz al Espíritu que se mueve entre nosotros. Come, let us worship God. Please join us in our hymns of praise. The first one is Shine, Jesus, Shine.
Come, Holy Spirit. The one who sang a new melody as God's creation rose from chaos. The one who wept at the dark shadow of a cross and who danced early in the morning at the opening of an empty tomb. Come, Holy Spirit. The one who could not be contained by wind or flame or breath. The one who blesses the church with courage, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit, to us, who gather this day with trembling hands and uncertain hearts. Teach us to sing a new song and to dance with reckless abandon. Here in this gathering of believers, as you did with those so long ago, Holy Spirit, breathe on us now. Breathe on us, blowing away our fears and our hesitations. Breathe on us, transforming our hard-heartedness into passion-filled lives. Breathe on us, for we need your peace, the peace that only you can give in Jesus' name. Amen. of patience and persistence. We live in a broken and shattered world. All around us we see great evidence of hatred and alienation. We cannot help but observe the alienation of your people from each other. We create devices to separate rather than unite, to divide rather than come together in hope. Forgive us for our sins. These sins cause such division and hurt. Remind us today that the disciples too lived in a fearful world that one day 
You came to them as they sat huddled in fear, and you empowered them. You gave them hearts of courage and faith. Please bring to us the same hearts that we may serve you well, bringing peace and hope to our world. It is in the name of Christ we offer this prayer. Amen. Fear no more. The power of God's Holy Spirit has set us free from the prison of doubt and fear. Now is the time to shine with the light of God's love given to you by Christ Jesus. So if you are near another person, or if you're simply online alone, take a minute and drop a note in the chat box. But let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. The peace of Christ be with you. today on a hot summer day an electric fan can really help to keep us cool now how does a fan do that that's right it keeps us cool by blowing air I think I will turn the fan on now do you see any air coming out of that fan well if we can't see the air how do we know it's working well, there are several ways that we can tell if this fan is working. One way that we can tell if this fan is working is I have tied some streamers onto this other fan. And even though we can't see the air, we can see the air blowing the streamers. That's one way we know it's working. Another way we know the fan is working is we can feel the air from the fan blowing against our faces. We can't see the air, but I can sure feel it. Finally, we know that the fan is working because we can hear the sound of the air and the rattling sound of the streamers as they blow. Now we can't see it, but we can hear it. Today is a special day, which many churches celebrate. It is called the Day of Pentecost. Here is the story of how it all began. The Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, the Jesus followers were all gathered together in one place, and God sent the Holy Spirit to give them the power to teach others about Jesus. Now, they couldn't see the Holy Spirit, so how did they know the Holy Spirit was there? The Bible says that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could hear the, might, the sound of a mighty rushing wind coming from heaven. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could hear the sound of the wind, just as we can hear the sound of the air blowing from the fan. Then the Bible tells us that they saw what seemed to be flaming tongues of fire that came and rested on their heads. They couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they knew that the Holy Spirit was there because they could see the flaming tongues of fire. Now, every year on Pentecost, we decorate our sanctuary with red balloons to remind us of the tongues of flame. Well, I couldn't resist. I have two little helpers to help remind us all about the tongues of flame and the red balloons. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
finally, the Bible tells us that they knew the Holy Spirit was there because they could feel his power. When they were filled with the Holy Spirit, he gave them the ability to speak in languages that they didn't even know so that they could tell everyone about Jesus. Now, you know, if I went to, say, France, I'd have a hard time telling people about Jesus because I don't speak French. But suddenly the disciples could speak and understand other languages so they could go out and tell the world about Jesus. Now they couldn't see the Holy Spirit, but they could feel his power in their life, just as we can feel the air from the fan. The Holy Spirit is still with us today. We can't see him, but we can hear him as he speaks in our hearts. We can see his moving in our life. We can feel the power of his presence as he guides us through each day. Pray with me. May your Holy Spirit guide me. I'm glad that he lives inside me. I want your spirit to let me see when others can use some help from me. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts you send and for your love that will never end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. God bless and stay safe. So now is the time we share our joys, our thanksgivings. Of course, number one on my list is thank you, God, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I have uh, a few messages of joy this morning. Ellen Emery writes in and says, good morning. How grateful I am for Emmanuel and the call to worship this Pentecost. Truly the Spirit of the Lord has filled Emmanuel, the sanctuary both on West Orvis and virtually. Also, um, Annabelle writes that she is thankful for God's protective powers for herself and her family. It was a rough week, but she is grateful that he gives us grace to press forward. She writes that her son had a rough week correcting a business problem, but God kept him, and she is thankful. And Jesus is awesome, and God is good. Also, Angie writes that her joy is the ability to be home. She's cleaning out lots of junk and preparing for Chad's upcoming surgery. A note from Maddie and Wendy. Maddie's mom has improved a great deal. Tests came back negative for COVID-19, and she has now been sent to a rehab facility. And her mood has improved, and she is doing physical therapy. So thank you for the prayers. They work. Keitha Ackerman called in this morning. Her joy is that her granddaughter, Leah Juwan, married Jordan Delage yesterday, and she was able to be with them. The ceremony took place at Leah's parents' farm and it was outdoors. It was simple, but it was beautiful, Keitha said. And the part that was the best was, as they were saying their wedding vows, Leah has a pet duck. And this mama duck has now 12 ducklings. And right at that moment, mama and the 12 ducklings all paraded by, almost as if they were part of the wedding party. <laughs> so we shared Keitha's joy and give thanks to God for that. I've received a card. My friend Kelly sends me a card every week, and I love getting them. This week, she had warned me. She said, did you, did you get my card? And I said, mm, yeah, I got one a few days ago. But you didn't get one this week. And I said, no. She said, oh, I had one filled with uh, glitter. So, shoot, I wish I hadn't told you now. So I come in this morning. There's the mail, there's a card from Kelly Ward to me, 
And so I said, well, I'm going to be smarter than that. I'm taking this card outside to open. I took it outside, so carefully opened it, and there's nothing in it. But there is this lovely note that says, Judy, my wish for you is 100% pure, outrageous joy. Love, Kelly. So that's my joy today, one of my joys. Uh, my big joy is my granddaughter, Elizabeth, turns 11 years old today. And the reason this is such a joy for me is the day she was born was on Pentecost Sunday. So her birthday has not fallen on a Pentecost since her birth. So this makes it an extra special celebration for us today. So I give thanks to God for my granddaughter, Elizabeth. And I, I hope I read everybody's. But now I would invite you to um, receive the choir. They are not here physically, but this is a special Pentecost anthem that they have recorded on a, at a previous time.
Today's reading is uh, the liturgist is Donna Kuhn. The word of God as recorded in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Crete, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Donna. This year, I think it's difficult for us to place ourselves in the Pentecost experience. Certainly the very beginning part that states, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. This is what our sanctuary looks like. It's hard to relate to this being together in one place as we are still confined to our homes and so uncertain when we will share bread and wine again around a common table. It is difficult to feel together, much less celebrate such an important day in the church here as I look around this empty sanctuary. Usually, our sanctuary is filled with red helium balloons on Pentecost. We all wear something red, and the banner is displayed with flames and wind jumping all around the words, saying, I will pour out my spirit on all people. That does not negate the fact that today is an important day, and it should be celebrated. So... We have red balloons tied to the front rail on the street side of the church. I invite you, if you're going by, to untie one, take it with you, and mark this special day that we received the gift of the Spirit. We are together in one place, in a sense. 
We are all in a hard place. We're all in a lonely place, a place of vulnerability and grief. We are bound together in uncertainty, together in our loss, together in our hopes and fears. Across all sorts of distances, geographical, cultural, linguistic, and socioeconomic, racial. But we are bound together as one people, one humanity, one planet, facing a common threat called COVID-19 that knows no borders. Now this story that Luke tells sounds fantastical, right? Tongues of fire, rushing wind, bold preaching. At its core, though, the Pentecost story is not about spectacle or drama. It is about the Holy Spirit showing up and transforming ordinary, imperfect, frightened people into the body of Christ. It is about God breaking in and disrupting our familiar ways so that something new and holy can be born within and among us. It is about the Spirit transforming us out of suspicion, out of tribalism and fear into a radical new way of engaging God and our neighbor. The disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. And as the crowd gathered out of amazement, each one of them heard others speaking in their own native language. Language is a very powerful boundary marker. It can be a huge barrier to understanding and knowing people who are different from us. To speak across barriers of race, ethnicity, gender, religion, culture, or politics is to challenge stereotype and even risk ridicule. To attempt to learn another language is to make oneself a student, dependent on others to help us understand the nuances of their culture. This is a time when we need such brave border crossing acts more than ever. As the world grows more tribal, as nations, cities, and even faith communities turn on each other out of suspicion and selfishness, as we are forced by the pandemic to physically separate from those around us, can it be that God desires to pour out the Holy Spirit so that we might learn new and life-giving ways of being the church? Ways to be love incarnate for our frightened and demoralized world. Where does the fire need to fall? to burn away all that hinders us from being bearers of good news in this dark time. When the disciples and their friends began to speak in foreign languages, the crowds gathered understood them. They understood it perfectly. It was who that was speaking that confounded them. Remember they asked, are these those uneducated Galileans? These people knew that that language was a barrier between them and people from other countries. And so when they heard perfectly in their own language, their own dialect, they knew it had to be God speaking to them in ways that they totally understood. They could hear words and expressions that welcome them in such an intimate way. It was as if God was saying, the spirit-drenched place, this fledgling church, this new body of Christ 
is yours. You don't have to feel like outsiders here. We speak your language, too. Come in. Come in and feel at home. You know, the horrors of this past week after George Floyd's death and the subsequent riots speak volumes. I think it was the image of three officers bearing down on him relentlessly, all three on top of him, that spoke the loudest to me. There was no confusing what had happened once I saw that image. Now, in family systems theory, the idea is to listen very intentionally so we can discern what the real issue is. Because usually what people are arguing about is not the real issue. The riots, the looting, the fires, they are just symptoms. Our job is to listen beyond them, to listen, really listen, and figure out what the real issue is. What is the reality of their lives? that drives people to take to the streets, basically declaring, crying out, no more. Think about someone who has lived for years at the hands of abusers. Every day they wake up wondering what kind of torment will be inflicted on them. Eventually, the hopelessness of the situation rises up, and once it does, it is converted to rage. They can't take it anymore. They've reached their breaking point. That is the real issue that is so apparent. Absolutely, looting and rioting is not a solution. But when someone has tried to speak out and no one has listened for decades, well, that didn't work either. Yesterday, I heard the Reverend Dr. William Barber say this. We're screaming because we've tried everything else. We need to continue to scream because it is killing us. It is killing us. It is killing us. And it is killing the soul of this country. Some of you may have seen the video I posted on Friday. But why I really need to talk about this is I, when I was praying that morning, I always thank God for life, another day of life. And especially during this COVID-19 thing, I thank God for the breath of life. And I realized that biblically, it is with the first breath that life begins. And so it's with the last breath that life ends. And this young man was pleading. He could not breathe. Pleading for life. So as I'm praying, as, as soon as I get those words out, and I'm saying, I thank you, God, for the breath of life. And I'm reminded of the image seared into my brain of this man who can no longer breathe, still with police officers on top of him. So I prayed, God, how long, how much longer must this continue? And in my spirit, I heard, how long will you allow it to, Judy? I was convicted so convicted. So I'm here to say that we need to talk, we need to listen more. We as a white community need to really listen. That is where we will begin to help bring change. When we really want to understand. In today's reading, 
The disciples who poured out into the streets babbling these strange languages, they didn't understand. They took a risk. Can you imagine how foolish they might have felt? But when the spirit nudges, they have to move. Meanwhile, the crowds who listened had to take risks as well. They had to suspend their beliefs and their disbeliefs. They had to drop their cherished defenses and opt for wonder instead of contempt. They had to listen and trust that these uneducated Galileans might have something really worthwhile to say. They had to widen their circle and welcome the others with strange accents into their midst. I'm asking us to do the same. It was in that moment, in that atmosphere of suspicion and cynicism, thousands of years ago, that some people spoke and some people listened. And into those astonishing exchanges, God breathed fresh life. Something happens when we speak each other's languages. We experience the limits of our own words and perspectives. We learn curiosity. We discover that what God desires for his creation is far too nuanced for a single tongue or a single people. I hope this Pentecost story compels us because it is a story for this time, for this moment. As we continue to face the coronavirus pandemic as people of faith, we will be tempted to grow complacent. We'll be tempted to forget that we are part of a much larger whole. We may forget that our attitudes and our actions affect others. As we listen to the cries of our black brothers and sisters, we will be tempted to remain silent indifferent. For the love of God, do not do that. Remember that we live in a world where words have become toxic, where the languages of so many cherished isms threaten to divide and destroy us. We need to learn the art of speaking across borders that currently separate us, because divided, we are defeated. Together, we rise. It is no small thing that the Holy Spirit loosened tongues to break down barriers on the birthday of the church. In the face of difference, God compelled his people to engage with one another. In the face of fear, Jesus breathed forth, forth peace. So happy birthday, church. Receive the Holy Spirit. Together, may we grow into all that Christ longs to pour into us, his body. May it be so. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to depart from this sacred space, we always take a moment and share our prayer concerns and ask each of us to take those into the coming week and continue to hold each other in prayer. Angie wrote this morning that she would like us to continue to pray that, that Chad would have a, a clear scan on Tuesday so that his surgery could be scheduled. Lord, hear our prayer. Also, I would ask you to keep Megan in your prayers throughout this coming week. She leaves Thursday for um, the Presbyterian Hospital in New York City. Friday, she will have surgery to remove this brain tumor that's pressing on her optic nerve. And so we pray that God would give her strength that God would give her peace and, and support that she did not even imagine was there. And let the surgery go smoothly 
and easily for her. Let her be surrounded as she travels with your presence, O God, and our love. Naomi writes this morning from and asks that God would stop the spread of COVID-19 in Bangladesh. She reports that yesterday there were 28 deaths and today 40. So we pray for the people in the, these lands around your earth, O oh God. And we ask for your mercy and we ask for healing. I would ask you to hold my friend Chris in prayer. Um, she is a dear friend and a pastor in New York City and feels the pain of her brothers and sisters so, so much with these last few deaths, unneeded deaths, the, the woman shot in her home, the young man jogging shot. Every one of them I've seen takes just a bit more out of her, and she is hurting. So please pray for her and all of our brothers and sisters that are hurting so much. Let us hear their cries, and Lord, heal them and heal us. Um, prayers for our friend G2, who lives in India. Her mother, Paksmi, um, she requires treatment for a chronic medical problem and is unable to make contact with the doctor or the hospital. And since the COVID-19 has placed them in confinement, there's no travel allowed, so she can't get the help she needs. So, God, we pray that you would be with her and that you would provide her healing. She has worked tirelessly to help others find healing. We are asking you to be her source of healing this day. Prayers for Naomi and um, all of the people in Bangladesh. Her 11-year-old daughter, Nidhi, has symptoms that are similar to COVID. I'm sure that's frightening, and we are asking, Lord, that Nidhi be well, and in your care, and no harm would come to their family. Vicki writes in and asks us to continue to hold her daughter Vanessa in prayer. Her due date for that baby is like three weeks away. So we are praying for a safe delivery for her and health for that baby. Deb Doherty writes that she worries for her, her children would be safe in the cities that they are in especially with the riots and all the violence that we see happening. I have a question asking if there will be a protest for equality in Messina. I don't know that there's been one um, designated yet, but I know that there's a gathering in Potsdam at 6 p.m. Uh, so, and a uh, gathering in front of the, the post office there. So uh, I probably will be heading up there, but uh, we'll keep you informed. Also, uh, oh, I have one more prayer request. Uh, our friend Devana has been very sick this past week, and she needs healing. We, and Annabelle also asked that we would continue to pray for protection for essential workers and the situation, especially in New York City. Her mother lives there and has lost many friends already. Her son is asking that his roommate find another place to live, so we pray that God would help that situation and pro make provisions for this person. And, um, oh, I have one more. Our friend Suzanne, um, her father, is Pierre, he lives in Montreal. He's getting CAT scan results tomorrow and we ask for healing results. Pierre's request is that he have a little more time to live so he can take care of his wife. And so we ask for your healing mercies, oh God. Let us pray. Spirit of God, come among us on this Pentecost day. 
Make today a rebirth day for your people. Shower your gifts of the Spirit upon us that we might have passion in our faith, strength in our commitment, courage beyond our imagining, and love without reservation. Send your holy wind among us, not as a gentle breeze to lull us into relaxation, comfort, or complacency. Not as people gathered together in some sort of benign social club, we ask that you would let it be a wind of fire to burn into our hearts a passion for your truth and a desire to share it. Give us tongues of fire, not to babble incomprehensibly, but to speak out plainly for justice and fairness and peace. To speak of the grace, bewildering in its simplicity, that sets hearts and minds and souls free through Jesus. Help us today to be ourselves, all that we can be for you, O oh God. Help us as a faith community to be all we can be, to be an accepting, embracing fellowship, not an insular one. Help us to reach out, not to lock out. We ask today that you would remove all pride, all jealousy, all judgment, and we need your help to say sorry more often. Forgive our moaning and complaining and open our eyes and our hearts to the real suffering around us. Like the apostles of old, brand our hearts with the flame of the power of your Holy Spirit. Brand us with holy fire so that what is outward, our words and our actions, our joy and enthusiasm will make it abundantly obvious who we are and for whom and what we stand. Help us to infect others with contagious joy, with the love and the grace and the promise of life abundant through Jesus Christ. God, let not even one person leave this sacred space today without feeling the warm stirring of your spirit within. We ask that you would pour out your spirit on your people today, O oh God. Let us not leave without embracing that same determination and passion that fired the apostles at that first Christian Pentecost celebration without recommitting our lives to you this day. It is in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Don't be afraid. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, this is a special day in the life of the church, and it's a day that the United Church of Christ receives a very special offering. It's called Strengthen the Church. And so I want to play just a very short film clip to, to give you a little more information. Thank you. 
If you feel led to give to that particular gift, if you send in a donation, just put a mark in the memo of your check that uh, that's for strengthen the church. Also, if you're giving online through our PayPal, there's a place where you can designate it as well. As always, we remain grateful for your support, for your donations, and um, for your actions that show the love of God to our community. So if, if you would like to support us, you can go to uccmessina.org backslash give, and you can donate online, or you can simply send something to Emanuel Congregational UCC at 39 West Orvis Street. Your gifts are appreciated. And this, at this moment, we're going to celebrate the gifts we've received this past week through the mail and online. Would you pray with me? For all you have given, for all we have received, we give you thanks. We bring before you our gifts of money and the gifts of our lives. We bring our passion and joy and surprise our visions and dreams. May they refresh and enliven our church and community as the wind of your spirit did long ago. Hear us now as we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Please join us.
from this space. Let us move with the Spirit. Let us breathe in the Spirit. Let us sing forth the Spirit. And let us live by the Spirit. Go in the blessing of our God to love and to serve wherever the Spirit moves. Amen. Let us sing our final benediction. Shalom to you. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.